Charles Rettig. Es comisionado del Departamento de Rentas Internas, que es un... I'm going to say it in English, of course. Thank I'm you. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to catch up with you in English. Pero... <laughs> Pero es una posición muy importante, una posición de, de, sin duda con poder porque maneja más del 96% de los ingresos del país. Es decir, um, your position when you were in it, um, first of all, you, you did a lot of changes, but that position specifically brings in 96% of the revenue or, or the, the gains Gross of, the, revenue right, of the United States of America. Of the United States, which goes over to um, education, exactly. anything that we have to do Bridges, in this country. Bridges, education, uh, everything that the government runs on, every all the benefits the government distributes defense um you know both actionable and uh, um, deterrence and and really you know, my comments typically are you know for the benefits that we have as living in the united states of america uh it's important i think that people understand that the irs is important to be able to provide that and the comments i used to use when i was commissioner of the internal revenue service was if you like um the benefits that you get living in the country, thank an IRS person. Ah, amazing. And 80, very important. You, and you were talking about 80, so more than 83,000 people that you had under your wing to make sure that the IRS ran and still runs appropriately. Correct. When I was on board, we had 83,000 employees, the Internal Revenue Service, 519 offices around the world, uh, annual budget about $14.1 billion, and our gross revenue just for the IRS was $4.9 trillion, which, as you said, is about 96% of the gross revenue of the United States of America. Let's talk about Hispanics. Yep. And that's what we're here in the USA. Yep. Of course, the USA Tax Con uh, Convention here in Miami, which eventually will go on to Las Vegas. Las Vegas. But um, okay. you're here with us, and it, it's incredible. You were the first keynote speaker of the, of the event. Um, and that makes it very important, not only because you have the knowledge from behind the scenes and being on that desk and, and manding um, that office. But you, what did you give uh, the, the audience today? What were those points th or those elements that were absolutely necessary for them to take with them today, those uh, tax preparers? I'm, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. The Hispanic community in the, in not only in Los Angeles, but the Hispanic community in the United States of America is critical to the operations of the United States of America. So tax preparers, people involved in tax are an important part of tax administration, helping us get it right, helping us get the word out to people that it's not a IRS versus somebody, that we're all in it together. And particularly for the folks here today, um, it's important for me that they know that they're part of tax administration, that they have a voice and they have a strong voice. And I want to encourage people to step up and use their voice. And if, if they feel uncomfortable doing it directly, reach out to either others who are here or reach out to me because the government and specifically the Internal Revenue Service relies on people of every community and certainly the Hispanic community to get it right. And that's, that's important. And we, we are we're an, an important part of the community here in the U.S., the Hispanic community. Certainly, um, it's a strong working community and, and definitely it's, it's a pillar of our country as well. Hispanic community built this country. There There's you no go. other way to say it. And I, I have to tell you, coming from Los Angeles, something that I'm very proud about was when I got on board at the Internal Revenue Service, the in income tax return, the Form 1040, was only in English. And that was, I got on board in 2018. The 2019 tax year form that's filed in 2020, we did in Spanish. That should tell everybody not only what I, how I feel about the Hispanic community and languages and support and services, but every employee at the IRS, you know, number one community that we went after in order to help get it right was a Hispanic community. And we launched in Spanish. And not only in Spanish. I mean, you have eight languages yep. already installed yep. on the on the platform, which people can go on and, and check out their taxes, I guess, or do whatever transactions they need to do. Um, back to the U.S. Uh, tax convention. Will you will you say that um, that what, give me three elements, three factors that they did take with with them today from you that they will be able to implement in their preparation of taxes coming up this uh, 2025, which will be an interesting year because we're on an election year. So things may or may not change towards um, January or after January, once the, the new president or the, the, the mandating president right now takes uh, back office, uh, what what would they take with them? What it's, is it's, or are things that they need to make sure they implement or they stay on top of? In an election year, it's very difficult for Congress to enact legislation, particularly it's going to be impactful, but that doesn't mean it doesn't happen. It right. could happen. So tax preparers have to constantly be ready and they, you have to have a knowledge, you have to have, you have to have experience, you have to care, but you've got to be ready that the game plan may shift. And so one of the points there is pay attention, come to conferences, um, come to things, you know, look at, look at things that are written that people are writing about where we're, where it's headed and be prepared. 
Number two, get all the information that you can get from a client, if you will, the taxpayer, in terms of preparing a tax return, and uh, do your best. And number three is um, mutual respect with the people at the Internal Revenue Service. I expect the Internal Revenue Service employees to respect taxpayers and tax community and tax professional community. And I asked for the tax professionals to give some respect to the Internal Revenue Service employees that they might be interacting with. It's a tough job. We ask a lot of the people at the government, specifically the Internal Revenue Service. And I, I like to look at it as we're all in this business together, if you will, the tax professional and the person at the IRS to try to get to the right answer as quickly as possible. The government is only entitled to the proper amount of tax due. It takes education and experience on the outside. And then the, another point I made to the folks here, what's critical for the tax convention is meet people. If you have a question, you should come out of this knowing some people that in your practice during the year, if you have a question, I can call this person or that person and they'll help me out. And then my other ask is if somebody asks you for help, help them. Professionals help professionals. That's, Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Hey, we have you guys are our community and, yeah. and we depend on you towards the end of the year, actually throughout the entire year to prepare, especially if it's a if it's a corporation that we're working, you know, yep. uh, or we yep. have. We have to prepare the prepare those taxes and have them ready through the year. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna get, uh, walk away from taxes and, and from from money and I'm gonna talk about food, Latino food. I mean, this is a, a conference that um that addresses the Latino and the Hispanic community here in the US. What's your favorite food? You so, live in LA, no? So, yeah. So, I live born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, I went to school in New York, but other than that, I've lived in Los Angeles my whole life. I get to Washington, D.C. And um, I, what I will say is Mexican food, a variation of Mexican food, three or four times a week in Los Angeles. I get to D.C., uh, there is no Mexican food. <laughs> a, there's a very close friend is a judge with the United States Tax Court. Um, he's from Texas. Um, he's Hispanic, first Hispanic person to be uh, nominated by U.S. president to be judge of the United States Tax Court. It's Judge uh, Juan Vasquez. So my wife and I are having dinner with Judge Vasquez and his wife. And I said to Juan and Terry, I said, hey, where do you go here for Mexican food? I'm, I'm struggling. I'm finding a lot of other things, but not Mexican food. And Terry says, oh, there's this place. And she gives me directions, place up behind the Capitol in Washington, D.C. And uh, then Juan says, well, it's actually it's Salvadoran. It's not Mexican food. No. And then um, I said to Juan, so where do you go for Mexican food? And Juan, where do you go for Mexican food? He goes, I go to San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a wait. <laughs> and what I spent five years asking for, and this is sort of old school. I'm a street guy. I told everybody at the IRS knew what I'm looking for is uh, I want the burrito that's wrapped in like the wax paper that right. when you bite in. The beans come out on the other right. end and kind of burn my hand. Or you may end up, may end up eating the, the, yeah. the wax paper. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm looking for, right? right. Not right. something that has some mint on it and right. sauce and it's on a plate and you got to put your pinky finger out. So um, the IRS employees did me a solid and they helped me find that. But I will say when we traveled and we did a lot of traveling around the country, um, if we were out of town two nights, it was Mexican and barbecue. And if we were out of town one night, it was Mexican food. And that was our quest. People used to think we travel, the commissioner travels to go get right. Mexican food, but it's sort of an inside joke, but I guess it's not inside anymore. I mean, there's an answer to, uh, when we, when we first walked into this convention, I, I went into the, uh, into the green room and you were standing there. There was a gentleman standing next to you. And uh, the first thing he said, when I, when I, you know, shake hands with him is that uh, because of this man is because, is why I'm working for the IRS. Um, a Hispanic man that uh, you met while you were in college and it still works for the IRS. And you, the greatest thing that he said is that you are still his mentor. Um, give us a little bit about, of, about that story. You know, mentoring is important. Friends are important. Relationships are important. And the person you're talking about is Louis Tejeda. There you go. Louis and I went to UCLA together. Louis is now the local taxpayer advocate in Los Angeles. He's been with the Internal Revenue Service more than 40 years. And um, Louis and I are obviously are, are very close. We eat a lot of food together. And the mentoring part of it, and I look at part of myself coming out and other people coming out to the tax convention, is part of mentoring and relationships and and whatnot to show people that this is not that difficult. If you focus on it and pay some attention to it, it's not that difficult. And the other part of it is the Internal Revenue Service is not a them. The Internal Revenue right. Service is an organization run by people who live in your community, who very often have very similar backgrounds to you, et cetera, et cetera. They are hiring, so we're trying to get people to come on board. And you know, folks who are looking for something to do, I should, should say, if you're very proud of your community, you should go on board with the Internal Revenue Service. You've got to get your message inside 
these federal organizations and the organizations will pay attention. We paid a lot of attention and uh, to the employees and the thoughts of the employees. I only know what I know. So I, when I go out and I talk to people and the experiences I can get from right. other people and I can bring that into the agency, which is directly what led to us putting the, for the income tax return in Spanish, um, there was some pushback by some folks in, in government that it costs us money to do stuff in other languages. And my comment was, well, we're here to serve people and we should be serving people in their language that they're most comfortable with. It's not to say that they're not fluent or know English, but how many people know tax English? It's hard by right. itself. Now take that into another language and we want to make it easy and seamless. And the government's definitely getting there. It'll get there much quicker now because of all the money that it got in the budget. But it's getting there. But it's important to make it easy so that people are, don't have an apprehension and anxiety about preparing their returns. I don't think we'll ever get where people want to prepare a return and want to pay tax. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not blind. But I think when you understand the importance to be part of something and getting a tax return as accurate as possible, getting it in and, and making the payment helps support <clears throat> the country that we have. And I, I, you know, as you're aware, my wife was born and raised in Vietnam. Right. She's a refugee from Vietnam from 1981. And I got to see and I hear a lot and I know a lot of, you know, what it's like to be in a country that might not respect its people. And people here, people in the United States might not feel respected, but I want them to know that they are. And I want them to know that the agencies like the Internal Revenue Service, we're you. We're, right. we're your community. We're in your community. And, and if we're not getting it right, you need to, people need to speak up and we'll fix it. We'll change it. Correct. Make your money work for you. Because exactly. that's exactly where, where all you the own money this. comes from. You own this country. You're part Absolutely. of this country. And, and stand up and take pride in it. Uh, now, I, 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 we were talking in the green room again with one of your colleagues, and and uh, he was talking in he was speaking in Spanish, and you were shaking your head. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming right here that you speak Spanish. So bring I'm, it on. So ah, <laughs> uh, un poquito, un poquito nada más. <laughs> en la comida, el menú de la comida, se lo so, sabe. So, you know the menu. Yeah. So I'll speak Spanish around my wife, who, okay. who who's doesn't know any Spanish. Okay. She thinks I'm fluent. Here with you, with Lewis and others, you're not going to get me to go there, right? <laughs> um, and when I get in an entirely English-speaking group, I pull back on my English because I'm a single-syllable public school kid oh, from, come on. from Los Angeles. <laughs> um, I respect everyone, and I'm in awe. I would love to go. I speak seven languages fluently. Okay. I, you know, that would be great. If it's true or not, I'm not going to tell you because I hear people – you know, today speaking Spanish all around me on the assumption I don't speak Spanish. So it works to my benefit. <laughs> <laughs> now, another one, um, another one, one thing that we have to, um, um, you know, uh, go over is that you have more than 40 years of experience in, in taxes and anything that has to do with, with this kind of, um, of information. And um, what would you say, Carlos, Carlos Ramirez is, is the person that organizes, is the founder of a um, USA tax uh, convention. What would you have to say about him and, and about this kind of event that really puts forward our Hispanic community in the country? I think Carlos is a close friend and he's, I think he's phenomenal. I think his efforts at pulling this together, making it happen, getting the exhibitors, giving, getting the people, but also the collegiality. You know, it's not where you go and you sit in a you sit in a chair and you watch some talking head, if you will, and you walk out and you're like, okay, well, I got some credit for my certificate or whatever. You come here and you feel part of it, and when you feel part of something, it's easier to learn and absorb. And that's, I think, some of the magic that's going on here. Um, obviously, the you know sort of Spanish and Hispanic and all that. I think helps pull people together and I hope that people come here and go out with a higher respect for who they are right among themselves and stand right. up tall and say hey you know I'm a very significant part of what we're all trying to do here I think that um, and and you know I'm from Los Angeles so you know if I had to, my the Hispanic community and I are very very close from a lot of different perspectives um, I think that communities need to know that they can have a voice and they need to take that voice and they need to, to get out there and make themselves known. And if I have a different thought process, other people need to know my thought process. So that's number one, stand up for the community. Number two, sit and listen and watch other communities 
right. pick a community, whether it's, you know, I'll say Vietnamese, Russian, you know, Korean, Ethiopian, and understand that they have things in their community that are important to them, have the patience and respect to hear them out. And there are times where we can actually blend these communities. We can go with the Hispanic community, we go with the Vietnamese community, go with the Ethiopian community, go in the door and tell the government, this is what you need to do, right? Right. So first, speak for yourself. I, that's critical because if you don't speak for yourself, nobody else is going to do it. Number two, when you go through that door, go through at that door proudly, no matter who you're talking to, right. no matter what their background is, and no matter what amount of time they may think they have or don't have, you claim that ground and you make your points. If you don't think, if you walk out of there thinking they didn't listen, you're wrong. They heard you. They might not have reacted there, but they go back and take it back. And even if it's baby steps, you're changing them Correct. to come to where you are. Absolutely. Well, this is uh, the former 49th commissioner of the IRS, Charles Reddick. It was a pleasure to talk to you, a pleasure to present you on stage. <laughs> and hopefully you'll be in the next USA Tax Yeah, I'll Con, be there in Las Vegas. Which will be Proudly Las Vegas. So. Yep. They will be waiting for you guys. Yeah. There's a lot of information you need to get from this guy. He's amazing. Not only he knows what he's doing, but he can also teach you a, a good way to do it and, and the right way to do it, I would okay. say. We're in it together. Uh, I'm amazing. Well, 2024 was a great year and um, hopefully 2025 for USA, uh, USA Tax Con will be an amazing year as well. Thanks for, thanks Thank for you. being here, former commissioner. Thank you very much. A pleasure to yeah, have you. Appreciate your time. Thanks. No problem. USA Tax Convention. Conectando a los mejores en el mundo de los impuestos.